Let's check out Ariel in Castle Rush today. 7k dreamer please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We'll be looking at Awakened Ariel after her remake. She is now a Castle Rush specialist. Right after Ares got her remake for Castle Rush. So we have two new Castle Rush specialists right here. And we are going to start off with Dylan's Day. Dylan's Day is not the easiest day at all. The reason is because he can reduce three of your allies HP to one HP, which means you are forced to heal. Otherwise, you're definitely going to die. So all your units here are very important, especially in the earlier part of the match. <laughs> So now you see that Rook has cast his Light Shield, so first thing you do is use Ariel's bottom skill to remove the shields. Thereafter, you can start casting all your debuffs on them, especially Rachel's Phoenix. Unfortunately, my Rachel got silenced here, and anyway, you have to heal up after Dylan's cast his 1 HP skill, which also silences, so it's kind of like a 2 in 1, where you heal up and also cleanse the debuff. So once you cast Phoenix, proceed on to buff your Shane with Lina's crit rate buff. And then also you can opt to actually cast Ariel's top skill which lands the taunt on one of the frontline enemies. One thing you need to take note is that Rook and Chancellor have very painful fixed damage skills and Ariel actually can reduce the fixed damage you take by 20%. So that's one very good point of having her over Tara in this case. You must also try to ensure that your units are at full HP before either of them cast their Awakened skill because they can do very heavy fixed damage, especially Chancellor. So healing is super important in Thursday's Nightmare Castle Rush and sometimes you may be unlucky because sometimes Dylan's may cast his 1 HP skill and then followed by the frontline casting some heavy AoE damage and that is when you're gonna be in trouble if you don't heal in time. Another tip you have to keep in mind is that always have a look at Dylan's skill cooldown. So for Dylan's skills, the one on the left is a single target which will do heavy damage on Ares because she has taunt and the one on the right is his 1 HP skill. So whenever he is about to use either one of them, you have to have to make sure that Ares is at full HP. This will definitely put you in a very safe position. <laughs> And I'm very happy that Rook has died already. Once Rook has died, you basically can be sure that your debuffs are gonna stay because Rook isn't around to cleanse them anymore. So that's a very good thing. And hopefully for you, like my case, the taunt from Ariel lands on Rook first so that Rook is the first one to go. Followed by Chancellor. Chancellor, I placed the taunt on him and he is down. So after this part, actually, I would say it's all about spamming Shane's skills and trying to cool them down as fast as possible. You can even use Ariel's bottom skill, Judgment of Light, which actually decreases cooldown by 30 seconds, which is the same thing that Rachel's bottom skill does. Cease to exist. Meet your Earlier on in the match, I actually casted Ariel's Awakened skill. Ariel's Awakened skill increases block rate for allies by 40% for 8 turns and decreases block rate for enemies by 40% for 8 turns. So the point where I casted this was after Rook has died because I don't want Rook to remove the decreased block rate casted on them. Okay, so I hope you saw that part. If not, just try to rewind a little bit just to check it out. So I make sure that Rook has died before casting so I make sure that Rook has died and then I cast that skill. So I'm more certain that Chancellor actually has a lower block rate and I can kill him off very easily. And then the rest of the block rate debuff is going to be on Dylan's. Unfortunately, Dylan still has a very high block rate. So even after a 40% reduction, he is still blocking a lot of skills. So by now I realize that it's no use to cast the block rate decrease on him because it's just a waste of a turn. You might as well be casting Shane's skills. So yeah, basically that's what 
Ariel's new utility is and after Rook has died and Chancellor has died, I think her utility just goes down same as what happens to Tara in the past after Rook has died, you don't even need to use Tara anymore however over here, let's just say your Ares died because of Dylan's very frequent crit and lethal attacks at least Ariel still has a part to play because Ariel can reduce Shane's cooldown with a skill so you can toggle between Ariel's cooldown reduction and Rachel's cooldown reduction and with these two skills in play you can still constantly apply Shane's skill even if Ares died but over here this is my fourth run and it took me a while to learn I realized that it is very very important to always heal up Ares before either of Dylan's skills. Okay, no. I realized it is very important to heal up Ares before Dylan uses his single target skill. So like in this case, the single target skill is almost ready. 5 seconds. Okay, so I make sure that Ares is at full health. Near full health at least, so that she won't die to this devastating attack. Okay, and that is how I try to preserve my Ares and she will constantly help to cool down Shane. And that is how I keep my damage output more stable throughout the entire match. And you will realize that I don't touch Rachel until her Phoenix is needed. And I don't touch Ares at all. Ares is really just there to counter. Ariel will only be used at this point if Ares dies. Beyond that, she is just there not doing anything, honestly. Okay? So always, always heal up. To preserve Ares, I think she's the most important hero here. She's helping your whole team tank all the attacks from Dylan's, which is very painful. Another hero you don't want to lose is Lina because she has your crit rate buff and she can also heal your team from the 1 HP conversion. So that is the key thing that Ares is protecting here. So yeah, I think the strategy is pretty much very straightforward from here. Just spamming Shane's attacks when it's done. And also keep in mind the debuffs on Dylan's. Once the Phoenix has run out, always, re always recast it. Otherwise your Shane is not going to do a good amount of damage on him. So I'm going to be fast forwarding the match. I guess you kind of know the damage output from Shane. It's about 15,000 her skill so you can do the math there how many skills she will need to accumulate and get a good score there are some times whereby you know once Lina casts her heal I immediately want her to heal up again because I see that the cooldown of the single target skill is very close so I will use Ares or Rachel's bottom skill to reset the cooldown and this is my score, pretty high I would say for Dylan so I expect the score to go up even further for other Castle Rush bosses and we're going to look at hero setups for Shane double lethal I would think that she could be good with one lethal and one crit actually so you may want to play around with that double lethal or one lethal one crit Double HP, standard PvE jewels, skill cooldown, physical attack increase, as well as crit and lethal damage. For her accessory, Willful Ring with Isabella's Illusion. For her traits, lethal rate up, lethal damage up, and increased damage on offensive heroes because they learn is offensive. Same goes for Fighter Soul, single target, 5 target, skill cooldown and increased damage on offensive. For Lina, you will need magic weapons on her so that you can boost her magic attack so that she heals a lot more for your entire team. HP 1 myth, 1 not myth, and then all red jewels, increase in PvE magic attack recovery skill, and also have skill cooldown because healing is super important on this particular day. Willful ring and evasion, evasion is very useful for your entire front line and I've also given evasion on Ares and Ariel as you will see later. Her traits, the most important thing is the silence resist because you don't want her to get silenced at all, otherwise she cannot heal your 1 HP conversion and you will die at that point. Next we have Ares, counter at 90% plus plus is the most important 
important thing here, you want her to have very very high counter rate. I've also buffed her defenses, so I have block rate and status effect resistance. I think you can swap out the status effect resistance for PvE defense if you have, I think that will make a huge difference to her bulk. Take note that I do have some form of block rate built on her, about 37%, and coupled with aerial skill, it will hit about 77%, so this further boosts her bulk. On top of evasion, evasion will have to preserve her even longer if she does evade some of the attacks, especially from Dylan's. For Rachel, she is more block based, so block armor, block jewel, you can give her evasion definitely, PvE defense as well, PvE defense really makes a big difference, I can assure you. So if you do have PvE defense, it's best to give your frontline that. And then for her traits don't really matter, her fighter soul also don't matter, maybe PvE defense is definitely good. And finally for Ariel, our new remake hero, double HP, one myth, one not, PvE skill cooldown so that she can constantly apply the taunt and also remove the shields. She also has PvE defense so she doesn't take too much damage and won't die too early. And also PvE status resist because you don't want her to get silenced as well, otherwise she cannot remove shields efficiently. For her accessory, because Ariel already has 20% chance to evade, given by her exclusive item, you can give her a different kind of substat for the accessory. In this case, I've given her decreased damage from 4 to 5 targets, so that she is slightly bulkier. Next we look at masteries, all flying to the left with one on the right which is lethal damage increase, and basically that's all. So I hope this video properly evaluated Ariel for you and you can decide if you still want to use her or use Tara in your Castle Rush team. If you found this video useful, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more guides, thank you so much and see you!